Well, hello and welcome to the Disgruntled Traveler Podcast. Thank you for joining me on this episode of how I pissed off a Vietnamese sales clerk. Now, before you start getting this in your head, I did not do this on purpose, okay? This was purely unintentional and by accident. So if you're ready for this story, kick back, get yourself a drink. And get ready for this unreal story. Okay, where does this take place? Well, first of all, you know it's in Vietnam, but where is it in Vietnam? It actually is in the central part of Vietnam. If you look on a map, if you've never been there, it's called Da Nang, or some people say Da Nang, but spelled D-A-N-A-N-G. And the scene, the background is actually, I'm on a tour group. Okay, so I'm not actually staying in Da Nang. I was staying in a, in a city that was um, east of it off of the beach that was called Hoi An, if I'm pronouncing that correctly. Very beautiful, lovely place if you ever get a chance to get out there. The old town is spectacular. But I said, you know what? I'm bored. I want to go take a tour and I want to see um, Lady Buddha, which is like a 100 foot statue made of white marble that sits on a hill, overlooks uh, the bay out there. She's so beautiful. And then, you know, they take you on a tour to go to the interior of the mountains. You, you go into this cave system and they've got all these carved out um, statues of Buddha and they're just sitting in the caves and, and you know, the natural light that's coming from the top of the cave down to the Buddha statue. It, it's just a stream of sunshine that comes through the cave and it just looks like God is smiling on you. It's amazing. And you know, it's just, it was just blown, mind blowing, totally mind blowing. So yeah, so, you know, that's the backdrop of the tour, but to tell you the beginning of all this, you know how when you book a tour, and you usually look online or you're looking at a pamphlet and it, it tells you step by step what the stops are going to be. Like, where are we going? What are we doing on this tour? How long is it going to take? Are we breaking for lunch? Do, we, do I need to bring food with me? All of this stuff, right? So this tour was really good about telling you the locations they were going to stop at, except for one place, okay? So how this went down is um, first they took us out to the cave system, okay? And you, you, literally, you literally have to hike up into the mountain. This is a breakfast time. We went early in the morning. You hike up into the mountains. You crawl into the caves. All right, you get a spectacular view on top of the mountain, spectacular tour of the caves. It's crowded, it's hot. And you're gonna work up a sweat because if you've ever been to Vietnam in the summer times, especially when they say the rainy season, it's slightly cooler than it normally is, but the humidity is off the chain. Now I'm from Florida and I'm gonna tell you, I know humidity, but Vietnam's humidity is next level, okay? <laughs> so it's a little hard to breathe, even though we were up in the mountains and it was a teeny bit cooler, but not by much. So when you get done, with this tour, you are going to be tired, sweaty, and hungry, okay? Because this tour took about two hours to do, give and take. So after the cave tour, we all jump back in the van, and you know, the next thing that's on the itinerary, at least is what they said, was that we're going to lunch right? Lunch was included. I was like, yeehaw, I'm starving. It was like around 11-ish, noon. I had, they picked me up at eight in the morning and I, I ate breakfast at 6 a.m. So I was ready. Like I had done burned my breakfast out by hiking through up the mountain and in the caves. And I was like, I am ready to eat. Let's go. So we get into the van, right? And I'm just anticipating this food. <clears throat> then all of a sudden, 
we pull into a parking lot that is not a restaurant. So I'm looking around and it says, it says outside of the store, and this is a giant store, and it says marble shop, marble statue shop. And I'm like, I'm looking at the itinerary, I'm like, I don't see marble shop on here, right? So I'm asking the driver, I'm like, what, what, what are we doing? Aren't we going for lunch? Why are we stopped at a marble shop? I don't get it. And I said, it's not on the itinerary. Did I miss something? <coughs> Excuse me. This is so deep that I have to drink water. <laughs> so anyway, he goes, oh, he goes, no, no, you like this marble shop. You know, they talk in broken English. Don't worry, we go to lunch, but we stop here first. I did not want to go. I said, how long are we staying in this marble shop? And he goes, well, we'll be here 30 minutes. I was like, 30 minutes, great. I says, uh, do I have to go in there? And he goes, well, no, you don't have to, but we're not leaving the air conditioner on in the van and you have to stand outside in the heat or go into the shop where they have some air conditioning. And I was like, oh, damn. So I was like, okay, I'll go check this marble shop out because everybody else on the tour was already out of the van and they were already going into the shop. And I thought, okay, well, they did have some interesting pieces, okay? Like, I have never seen so much carved marble in my life with all different colors. I'm talking green and bronze. And then you had the bright yellows and the peaches and the coral colors. I mean, it was spectacular. I ain't gonna lie. And the intricate detail of the marble itself, like they had statues, not only of Buddha, but they had statues of the jungle and different animals. And, and I'm talking, they even had combs. It wasn't just statues, but they, they had hair combs that were, had little carved, you know, marble at the end of it. Everything was made for marble. They had earrings, they had bracelets. I didn't buy a bracelet, but anyway, something similar to that. So everything from like statues that were 10 feet tall to little trinkets of, you know, little, little teeny Buddhas, um, to, to jewelry, to hair accessories, to wallets, like you name it, it was in this shop, okay? And this shop wasn't just one square, building it was like two giant buildings like a warehouse and it was just it kept going and going right so there's about 10 of us on the tour there's 10 of us on the tour i'm in there looking around i was like okay the air conditioning feels good maybe i could go use the bathroom while i'm here got 30 minutes to kill then we go to lunch I'm not in the best of moods, but I'm like, okay, I'm gonna make the best of it because I really have no choice, okay? Like, I either stand outside in 95 degree weather and sweat my buns off, or I can go into this shop and pretend like I wanna buy something and cool down. So that's what I opted to do. Even though I was pissed that they didn't put this on the itinerary because I'm not in the market to buy anything made of marble, okay? Especially being a solo backpacker, I can't carry a bunch of stuff in my backpack, you know, like it, especially going through immigration and everything from airport to airport to airport. So I'm just looking, I'm like, you know what? Maybe I want a comb. So I'm going around, I'm looking at the combs, mega expensive. Now, before I tell you how much some things were, I want you to keep in your head the conversion rate. Now, this is what it is approximately now. When I went, this was a year ago, but I'm sure that it's about the same, but one American dollar actually equals 25,000 of their currency. Now they call their currency Vietnamese dongs, D-O-N-G-S. If you think I'm making this shit up, <laughs> look it up because I am not lying, okay? Dongs, that's what they're called. So anyway, I'm walking around, I'm looking at the jewelry, I'm looking at the combs, and I got this one little Vietnamese sales clerk lady tagging me. 
it seems like everybody else was like clustered together, but I started to go off by myself and you know, I get it. Things are really expensive in there and they probably don't want anybody stealing anything, obviously. So she evidently just took it upon herself to like, just stick by me. Like she was literally a foot behind me the whole time I was walking around the store. If I moved, she moved. If I stopped, she stopped. <laughs> <laughs> but she wouldn't say it. It was just so weird. It was so weird. Like, have you ever been to a car lot to look at a car and you got the salesman just tagging you, hey, hey, you know, and they're trying to like talk you in the back. Hey, this car is great. This car is great. I thought maybe she would talk me into some things, but she's just following me around like a, a used car salesman and just staring at me, right? And I'm thinking, well, I'm looking around I'm like, well, there are cameras in every corner of this building, but they evidently, evidently don't trust their cameras because now they're following the customers, which I think is sort of rude. Like you should give me at least some space. You know, instead of being a foot behind me, I get it. If you want to follow me, maybe be five feet behind me. Like give me some breathing room, right lady? But I didn't think nothing. I was like, it's their country. I'm not going to, it's what they do. I'm not going to say anything. So she saw me interested in a comb. I asked her how much it was. And to convert in their currency, she said $100. I was like, the comb was only this big, okay? But it had the, um, you know, had the de intricate detail carvings made in marble and it was beautiful. It was like a coral handle and it was so pretty, but it was $100. And I was like, ah, can't afford that. So she puts it back away. I asked her about the earrings. I saw some really pretty green jade earrings that maybe were about this big, real tiny for your ears. How much are those? $500. <laughs> Holy sugar, honey, iced tea. I can't afford nothing out of here. So I was like, okay, I'm done with section one with the jewelry. So I was like, I was interested in the back. There was a whole nother room in the back that opened up and that's where all of the really like big, beautiful carved statues like you would have maybe sitting by your pool or in the entrance way to your house, like these really cool statues, right? And like I said, they're out of coral, greens, yellows, and then just dragons, like carved dragons, like my tattoo or the Buddha itself, or just women holding their fans like this. I mean, it was just so intricate and so beautiful. So again, this sales clerk is right behind me, one foot away, and she follows me to the back room. So I want to be respectful. <laughs> I have my camera and I wanted to take pictures because I have never seen anything like this before, okay? Nothing like this at all. So I asked her, because she speaks some, she spoke some English. I says, um, hey, do you mind if I just snap some pictures? Like, I'm like, can I, can I, can I do this? Take some pictures? And she says, yes. So I said, okay, cool. So even though I know she's right behind me, like I'm taking a picture of this dragon and I'm taking a picture of this Buddha and this temple. I'm like, wow, this is just amazing. So I get it. She doesn't want me to knock anything over, right? But I'm being super cool, super careful but I'm starting to get a bit annoyed, okay? Because like I said, I am hot and hungry and I want lunch and I'm already about 20 minutes into this thing and she won't leave me alone. But it seems like all the other tourists were being tagged in there. I guess because I was the only one walking around. I don't know. Uh, so I just turned to her because I really wanted to get something small. Like I wanted something so tiny, like we're talking this tiny that I could carry with me. It could be anything. It could be a teeny little statue of a temple or a Buddha or an elephant, or it could be an earring it could, or a ring, just something super tiny, just something to remember this by that was made of marble. I said, surely they've got to have something in here that's cheaper than a hundred bucks, right? <laughs> wrong. <laughs> so I asked her very, very politely. I said, I said, excuse me, since she was right next to me. 
do you have anything in here about this small, just something really small for 25,000 dong? And you remember, 25,000 dongs equals one buck in American. You would think, I was talking about war. I don't know, her eyeballs got this big at me and she had this really nasty look on her face. Like I just said something, like I cursed her out. She went, and then she went off on me. She goes, don't you understand how long it takes for them to make these? It takes them all day, it takes them all day, 12 hours, 14 hours, 16 hours a day, just to carve one little thing to put into this shop. And I just went, whoa, <laughs> like, calm down, lady, calm down. I said, I'm only asking, that's it. I just wanna know if you've got something for a buck. It's very simple. All you have to say is, yes, we do or no, we don't, right? But no, no, after I said, no, 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 I'm just asking. And then she just kept flying off the handle, bro. Like, like she just was going in on me. I guess, cause you know, she could tell I'm English. She knows I'm an American tourist. And she's like, you know, you think everything's cheap. Uh, 25,000 dong is nothing to us out here. We can't live off of that. And I mean, she was giving me like the guilty trip right? Like just the guilt trip big time. <laughs> I was like, I understand. I says, I'm just, I try to talk calm to her. I said, I'm just asking, do you have anything in here for that amount? If you don't, it's okay. She wouldn't stop. So <laughs> at that point I had to pee. And I wasn't about to hear any more of this bashing. And like I said, she has been on my ass, following me around in this store for 20 minutes now. And I'm hungry, <laughs> okay? I didn't want to go off on this lady. This is her country. This is her store, whatever. So I just said to her, after she's still ah, freaking out, I says, oh, excuse me, where's the bathroom? Can you tell me where the toilet is? So that broke her train of thought of her cursing me out basically. And then she just goes like that, points that way. And I go, thank you. And I just started walking off to the bathroom. I just left her and I just walked off to the bathroom. And then I noticed from the corner of my eye, she starts walking off like, like all huffy puffy. <laughs> So I go into the bathroom and I'm just, I'm just smiling. I'm just giggling. I'm like, oh my God, I just pissed this lady off. And I did not mean to piss her off. Okay. Like it just happened. And I don't know. She just was triggered when I asked her if there was anything in the store for a buck. So I was like, okay, I'm going to calm down. She needs to calm down. So I stayed in the bathroom for like five minutes, right? Did my thing. There was a lady next to me that was sitting, well, she was washing her hands in the sink and I told her the story. In fact, it was one of the women I was traveling with and she started laughing. <laughs> I says, I don't know, man. She's just so mad that I asked her if there's anything in here for a dollar. So I says, don't ask her if there's anything in here for a dollar. She started laughing. But before all of that happened, here's another thing I didn't mean to, I forgot to tell you. Mm, excuse me. So anyway, <clears throat> before we got to the back room, right? I'm telling you, she's following me. There was an outside courtyard that had the really big statues. Like I'm talking 10, 20 foot tall, like mountains of marble that were carved intricately, beautifully. I don't even know how much these statues were. Like they probably cost $100,000 US, if not more. Like these things were monster statues and they must have weighed a ton. So she saw me just peeking out and looking at these giant statues before I went in the back and she goes, oh, she goes, we ship these all over the world. She goes, where are you from? Well, that's when I did tell her I was from America, so she knew. And she goes, oh, you know, just pick one out, I'll ship it to you right now. And I'm thinking to myself, what? 
I didn't even want to ask her how much these were or how much it was to ship. Can you even imagine a 10 foot marble statue that weighs maybe a ton and she's going to ship it to you in the United States? Bro. But that was before the incident when I asked her for something this big for a dollar and she went off on me. <laughs> Anyway, I cannot make this stuff up. These are my stories on the road. And remember, don't ever forget, I am the Nostrando Traveler!